how to become an SAT map genius, even if you're currently struggling with basic algebra. I scored a near perfect 780 on the SAT math section, and right now I'm revealing the exact step by step system. There is a hidden pattern to SAT math questions that top scorers understand. And once you learn it, you will see your practice scores jump from average to exceptional within weeks of implementing these. When I first started studying for the SAT, I was doing endless practice problems thinking that volume was the key to success. Then I noticed something completely strange. Questions that seemed completely different on the surface were actually identical underneath. And this discovery led me to create what I call the skeleton's key system, a method of identifying the core structures behind every single SAT math question. Uh, firstly, you should pull out any practice SAT test and look at the math section. You will notice that about 80% of the questions fall into just 7 categories. But here's the secret. Within each category, there are only 5 to 7 skeletons that College Board uses. Match with these skeletons and you've essentially mastered the SAT math test. But Here's what's truly mind-blowing. The College Board actually designed psychological traps into each question type. And once you see these traps, you will never fall for them ever again. Now let's talk about the trap detection system. Let me show you exactly how this system works with a real example of how the College Board tries to create nested percentage traps one uh, one of their favorite skeleton structures. So the original question is when a collection of books is sources, 75% are nonfiction and the remaining books are fiction. Of those that are fiction, 80% are mysteries and the remaining fiction books are fantasy. If there are 1049 fantasy books in this collection, what is the total number of books in the collection? So most students see this question and they immediately think this is so complicated. With all these nested percentages, they scramble to set up complex equations. And most students often make calculation errors along the way. But when you recognize the skeleton of this question, you see that this is just a standard nested percentage problem with a predictable structure. So firstly, there is a big group divided into two categories, nonfiction versus fiction. One subgroup further divided of mysteries versus fantasy. The genius approach is to work backwards. Number one, fantasy books equal 20% of fiction books. Fiction books equal 25% of total books. So fantasy books, 25% multiplied by 25, so that's the 5% of total books. But here's where it gets really fantastic. The College Board re reuses this exact same skeleton structure across different tests. They just change the context and numbers. Let me prove it to you with three more examples here. So the first variation is this, the warehouse problem. In a warehouse, 60% of items are electronics and the rest are furniture. Of the furniture, 25% are chairs and the rest are tables. If there are 720 tables, how many total items are in the warehouse? And the trap remains really identical. They want you to get lost in the percentages, but the skeleton solution is the same. So tables equals to 75% of furniture since 25% are chairs. Uh, furniture equals 40% of total since 60% of electronics. Tables equals 75% multiplied by 40. So now let's have a look at the second variation of this type of a question. Do you see what's happening here? They literally change the context completely. Books to warehouses to toys, to schools, but the underlying structure remains identical. They're using the same trap over and over, just with different window dressing. 
implementing this next strategy is genu genuinely one of the most underrated strategies that can dramatically improve your SAT score. And it's the difference between students who get low scores and those who consistently break through to higher SAT scores. And it is the SAT error lock. I noticed that the ones who actually systematically tracked and analyzed their mistakes improve two to three x faster than those who simply marked always answers wrong and move on. And you may be thinking, why this error lock strategy works so well? Well, the brilliance of this approach is that it literally transforms your mistakes from frustrating setbacks into valuable data points. Most students view uh, mistakes as failures, but those who get high scores see them as feedback loops. Uh, that reveal exactly where they need to focus on next. So firstly, there could be careless mistakes, the low-hanging fruit, let's say. And these mistakes don't reflect your knowledge gaps, but it rather reflects execution problems. So you should check signs and make sure that you're uh, answering what was asked, and you can easily pick up 30 to 50 points on the mass section alone by fixing these careless ones. The next type of mistake is conceptual. And this is the growth opportunities. This is exactly where the real learning happens. When you identify a true conceptual gap and then you'll deliberately fill it in, you're building a stronger mathematical foundation that pays dividends across multiple question types. The next type of mistake is misread mistakes, the silent score killers. These are particularly so frustrating because you actually knew how to solve the problem, but you miss what was being asked. And in your spreadsheet, you can have the question type of mistake, what you thought, what you missed, concept involved, fix or insight, and then pattern, if there is a pattern, yes or no. So the pattern column uh, helps you identify recurring issues. If you're consistently making careless uh, mistakes on questions that involve negative exponents, for example, that becomes a high priority area to address. And the next thing that is so important is to review uh, your error lock every single week. Look at the most common question types that you made on, that you made a lot of mistakes in, and you can also create 20 to 60 minute focus sessions on your highest frequency mistakes. And as you eliminate conceptual gaps, you will likely see more careless mistakes. And this signals that you're ready to shift focus to precision and double checking strategies. Look, mashing the SAT mass is so powerful, but your SAT score will always have a ceiling. And that's exactly why I created a completely free SAT reading playlist with over five hours of content showing you everything that you need to reach a very high SAT score on your reading and writing section in 2025. So click on this video here where I will show you the exact techniques that you will learn and how you can transform your entire SAT experience.